Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, for those of us who are not in, within the country, within the country of Kenya, we also want to wish you a good afternoon, uh, depending on what part of the world you are in, and we want to welcome you to the uh, today's launching of the uh, Africa IoT and AI Challenge, Kenya. Uh, we will give a few minutes to one or uh, two of our guest speakers, and then we'll begin. But for now, I uh, just want to call the meeting to order. And uh, we do have uh, some entertainment that is meant to be uh, uh, run by the young people. Uh, and we want to welcome Mulela to just give us um, an opening, um, uh, an opening uh, um, entertainment segment. Mulela? As Mulela organizes himself, uh, I would just like you to uh, take your seats and uh, get ready for an engaging uh, uh, launching of uh, this year's uh, AI uh, and IoT Africa Challenge, uh, Nairobi, Nairobi chapter. Commerce um, uh, innovators who are um, uh, looking forward to the next step in their lives. Go ahead, Mulela. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, can everyone hear me very clearly? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. It's a pleasure uh, being invited to perform uh, on this platform. Uh, as, you are, as you have heard, my name is Mulela, Mulela Kevin. Uh, I'm a student, yeah, and I am passionate about music. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, please enjoy as you listen. For the feelings I have for you How, how can I explain the For the feelings I have for you I wish, I wish I could hold your hand Now tabasamu as I see your love, Sony. Oh, I wish, I wish you could rise at dawn with me, a killing me. Oh, Kini was a me, Tulia, Moyo Wangu, Tulia, Omba Usi Choke, Tulia. Tulia, Tulia, Shukari Bunawe, Tulia, Amis, Tulia, 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 So in my space, my beautiful now keep a hand, now develop every man. Ili uchaze kipengo Never once, never twice Hold me hand, you'll be fine Never once 
all the time. Yeah, never once, never twice. Hold me hand, you'll be fine. Never once, and all the time. So, Julia, Moyo Wangu, Julia. Omba usi choke, tulia, ah, tulia, ah, tulia, yukaribu nawe, tulia, amesema tatanga, tulia, ah, tulia, ah. Yeah, yeah. We want to really appreciate lovely, lovely music that you're playing. Thank you for ushering us into this uh, time. Uh, thank you for the great skill. Uh, we appreciate you, Mulela, and uh, well done. Keep going on. Uh, and uh, we wish you the best, even as you hone your skill, which is a special skill um, that will usher you into your future. Yeah, so thank you. at this time, thank you, thank you. Uh, at this time, we want to really just uh, appreciate all our guests who have joined us uh, from uh, across the country, from uh, wherever they uh, they are across the, the country, across the world. We have uh, many other competitors coming in from Uganda, from Nigeria, from South Africa, from Tunisia. We really want to welcome you to our uh, uh, challenge opening uh, session today in, in Kenya, Nairobi. So welcome. Um, the Internet of Things as well as AI forms an integral and a very important part of the entrepreneurial uh, space in uh, the world and uh, particularly here in Kenya. We want to just encourage young people as they uh, get into their, 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 their future to consider AI as an, uh, as an area of, of um, uh, career path and career progression. And so as we mark the opening of this challenge uh, in IoT and AI, we also want to just uh, note the marking of the World Youth Skills Day, which is an important day that is marked across the world uh, on the UN calendar as a, a day when uh, skills and um, uh, um, uh, skill development is, uh, is marked across the world, especially among the young people as an area for um, uh, progressing uh, and giving yourself an opportunity to, to earn a revenue, to earn a job and uh, grow yourself for the future. So AI for us forms a very, very important area. And uh, as we mark this day, we want to just encourage young people to go out there, create amazing innovations, innovations that is going to see them um, go into their future with confidence. <clears throat> So at this point, I want to in, invite our, our key uh, keynote speaker um, just to, to give us uh, his opening remarks. Um, and uh, at this juncture, I would like to invite uh, Mohamed Aboud from uh, AIoT uh, Africa. Uh, well, please welcome uh, Mohamed. Welcome, Mohamed. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, and uh, it is a great pleasure to join uh, you today in the official launching of uh, Kenya IoT and the iChallenge. Uh, I'm sharing my screen now uh, to start uh, a quick presentation to introduce what is uh, uh, IEEE Temp Society and what is uh, AI and IoT uh, Challenge. Assalamu uh, uh, alaikum. Uh, hello, everybody. It is a great pleasure to join you today. Uh, uh, IoT and I Challenge Africa is now connected. It is a, a big initiative uh, launched by Technology and Engineering Management Society uh, since uh, five years ago. Uh, we will go quickly about the history of the IoT, but let's start with what is IEEE Technology and Engineering Management Society. Uh, the, uh, Technology and Engineering Management Society is part of the IEEE, which is the largest professional society worldwide uh, uh, focusing on all areas related to uh, electrical engineering, computer science, and all related fields. 
technology and engineering management society is one of the oldest IEEE society societies that focus on technology and engineering management and innovation uh, and entrepreneurship. Uh, we established many programs to build the bridge between research and industry and innovation. Our focus is uh, people enablement, uh, product and service enablement. We are starting from uh, the technical concept and helps uh, talent people to reach with this technical concept to convert it to a real product, a real uh, uh, technology, a real startup that is contribute for the benefits of humanity. Uh, uh, that's why we started many initiatives. Uh, uh, IoT and the iChallenge is one of these big initiatives we started since long time ago. Uh, what is uh, uh, Africa IoT and iChallenge? Uh, it is a continent-wide capacity building and the pre-incubation program for senior university students, startups that have innovative ideas in the area of the internet things, artificial intelligence, and all related fields. It is not just a competition. It is a digital transformation movement. That's why it, is deliv it delivers training workshops to participants and provide them with all needed support to be able to convert their ideas into a real products and a real opportunity. Uh, we started this initiative since uh, five years ago in 2016 as an Egypt IoT and I challenge with the support of the IEEE Ministry of Telecommunication, Ministry of Fire Education, and many other local support and partners, and in partnership with the innovation cluster in Burg Al Arab. Uh, after uh, uh, three years, uh, we launched a Arab IoT and I challenge. Uh, and we got uh, four Arab countries in, in this challenge. Now uh, we are so pleased to have uh, Africa IoT and I challenge with seven African countries and also Arab IoT and I challenge with nine Arabic countries. And we hope next year's uh, all uh, African uh, countries in the continent will be part of this big challenge. Uh, uh, some challenge insights then starts uh, we have we 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 uh, have a lot of participants that participated in the challenge, uh, uh, startups, graduation projects. Uh, we did a lot of training, mentorship, uh, ideation camps, hackathons to support all participants to convert their ideas into a very successful startup and products. This is some of the successful ideas. Uh, uh, that uh, converted into a, a, a successful startups in the past few years. Uh, XIoT from Egypt, Omnisat from Morocco, uh, Abjad from Palestine, Tilawa from United Arab Emirates, uh, uh, Broad Save from Tunisia, uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, we WTI from Jordan. Uh, the challenge is focusing on graduation projects, startups, and also we have another uh, third category for high school students to support STEM uh, uh, students and STEM projects. And we hope by the next year, Kenya also will be able to uh, launch the challenge uh, for high school students. And uh, this is some of the uh, uh, technical and vertical tracks that the challenge support, uh, automotive industry, energy, healthcare, education, smart manufacturing, uh, uh, retail and e-commerce, uh, smart buildings, smart homes, smart agriculture. These uh, verticals are part of our challenge and we encourage all participants to think about uh, solutions, products, ideas related to these fields. Uh, 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 a quick milestone for the challenge. Uh, uh, we are so happy today to uh, have the official launching in Kenya. Uh, since a few uh, hours ago, uh, we launched officially the challenge in Tunisia, in Uganda. Uh, in the beginning of this week, uh, there was official launching for Nigeria. Uh, as I said, by the end of this year, we will have seven African cont uh, countries running the challenge locally and qualify winners for the, inter the regional final in December. Uh, our regional finals in December will be part of the IEEE Global Conference of Internet Things and AI in Dubai uh, uh, in congestion with Expo 2020. Uh, this is uh, uh, a very important part of the challenge in the IoT and the I Knowledge Hub, uh, which provides 
all needed uh, information, all needed training materials, training resources for all people who are interested in the IoT and the I. We are developing this educational platform in partnership with well-known uh, technology companies as Amazon, Intel, Google, Microsoft, Tier Technology, and many other partners who are interested to help and support the movement of a digital transformation. Uh, uh, we uh, would like to thank our uh, uh, main partners who launched this challenge in partnership with uh, us, uh, IEEE, IEEE TEMS Society, uh, IEEE African Council, and also we would like to thank our official sponsor, Benia Capital, who uh, did a lot of efforts and put a lot of support to uh, make this uh, challenge happen all over African continent. Also, we are so pleased to thank our local partners from Kenya, Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, thank you very much for your great effort, for your support. And we are looking for a great success story in Kenya. We are waiting for the talent, for the, uh, the, the talent minds and the entrepreneurs will come from Kenya to compete in the regional and international level. Thank you for all our uh, community and partners and looking forward for a successful challenge in uh, Kenya, uh, Nairobi. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Mohamed Abud, for that uh, uh, engaging and engrossing um, uh, introduction of the challenge. Uh, we embrace the challenge and we believe that Kenyan uh, um, entrepreneurs, especially the uh, innovators, are going to take this challenge at, uh, at, uh, at the, at the um, regional level. Um, now we want to just welcome our chamber vice president, the first chamber vice president, Dr. Eric Ruto, just to give his uh, opening remarks and keynote speech. Dr. Ruto, welcome. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Director Mushiri. I hope you can uh, hear me clearly. Yes, uh, I, we can. And Yes, uh, sorry, I know we are having uh, Muslim prayers at four o'clock. There is an interference from the background, uh, but I think uh, I'll be ready to proceed. I would, of course, before I start uh, my remarks, I would really want to appreciate you uh, being uh, one of the national directors in charge of youth. Uh, we have in attendance a uh, director, uh, Praveen, who is in charge of technical and professional training, and also the chairman of ICT, Mr. Engineer Rama. Uh, who is uh, in attendance physically with me here today. As the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, we are indeed uh, privileged and uh, we are honored uh, that uh, you have chosen uh, to host uh, this event or to be a co-partner uh, as the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the uh, Internet of Things uh, for Africa. Uh, today, I am pleased uh, to attend this uh, launch of the Africa Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence uh, Challenge 2021. Uh, I would want to appreciate what the uh, immediate presenter said that already you have uh, 2,300 uh, people have gone through training. We have had approximately 500 successful graduates and uh, uh, a number of successful uh, uh, innovations that have gone into the market, approximately five uh, spread across Africa and maybe one or two in the Middle East. And it shows actually whatever we are doing uh, is uh, practical and it is uh, happening in the ground. We are glad that Kenya was selected as an official local partner uh, to participate in the regional challenge for Africa Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence uh, Challenge 2021. This will enable the business community and in particular startups to be innovative and to tap into the international trade, which is in line with Chamber's vision of a vibrant and prosperous uh, business community. And just to quote, and just to give you a, a, a little bit about figures, that uh, as a Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, we are there forefront of supporting Africa in terms of having one market in Africa, that is African free continental trade area. And I think uh, if we compare ourselves with the whole world, uh, intra-African trade right now is at 16%. If you go to Europe, I think they're around 67%, uh, Asia around 66%, and the Americas are approaching uh, 70%. I think this uh, internet of things will close the gap in a very, uh, fast manner, uh, so that as we now sign and we have a, a borderless Africa, uh, I am sure that the Internet of Things will be one of the key 
uh, pillars to provide for that. In this uh, fourth industrial revolution, both developing and less developing nations have no choice but to embrace uh, in, uh, Internet of Things to be able to fit and participate in this global economy with, uh, with identity, recognition, and fair placement. Africa, uh, trying to step up in technology and development of fields as a means to fight poverty and the health issues, especially after the pandemic uh, of COVID-19 uh, outbreak, uh, of uh, 2020, you might note that in Africa, we do not have uh, any vaccine that has come out of Africa. And I'm sure uh, such kind of uh, interactions that we are having in terms of innovation uh, will go in a long way in terms of placing Africa in the right place and uh, among us, its peers uh, in other continents uh, globally. In mind that building a technical capability and youth capacity in the industry will help develop the continent's infrastructure and save its next uh, generation. So what are the opportunities for business in terms of artificial intelligence and Internet of Things? The Africa Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence will provide the opportunity for young people, to pro, uh, young business people in various countries to create a network and to support digital transformation uh, within Africa. Less developed countries to take advantage of the new and uh, changing markets, enable and uh, a fair level progress and creation of opportunities. Uh, and also reducing the existing inequities between North and the South by ensuring that the existing and fast growing digital transformation era is embraced in Africa. In conclusion, we need to embrace open innovation to accelerate transformations that these technologies will bring to impact the uh, ICT industry in Africa. I wish to express a special gratitude and appreciation to Africa Internet of Things and, and Artificial Intelligence for their unwavering support for this course. We are looking forward to their continued partnership and support and future endeavors. I'm confident that the successful implementation of Internet of Things and Artificial Intelligence Challenge will not only enlighten startups, but enable them to innovate in facilitating and promoting sustainable business environment for economic growth and prosperity. And as a Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, we want to endorse this event. And we are saying that we are going to support it and uh, through our sectoral committees that is technical and vocational, ICT, and uh, a youth that is led by uh, our moderator today, Director Mushiri, that in, we are in 100% support of this program. And thank you for listening. And uh, thank you for the attendance and my colleague panelists for being available for this virtual event today. Thank you. Back to you, Director Mushiri. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ruto, for the great uh, keynote speech and uh, just showing how the interaction between the, uh, from uh, an IoT and AI perspective is then connecting the rest of the, the commercial sector within uh, the country and in Africa. Thank you for highlighting especially the connectivity between uh, uh, different countries within Africa and uh, our, uh, the, the potential of um, IoT and AI then close the gap and ensure that uh, Africa, inter-Africa trade grows to the levels that we are seeing in Europe, they're seeing in Asia, as well as the Americas. Uh, thank you very, very much for the support that the Chamber has offered, uh, particularly towards the young people who are looking at, uh, at, um, at a skill uh, to, to develop themselves, and IAT presents an excellent opportunity uh, to grow and uh, create opportunities. Uh, now I want to invite our guest speakers we have Vincent Kabunga. Uh, we uh, are waiting to hear your excellent um, uh, engagement. I know you've just come out of uh, your opening ceremony in Uganda. Uh, we are hoping to hear uh, excellent things from that side as well. Welcome, Vincent. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, jumbo to you all. And uh, uh, it is really exciting to, to to be a part of uh, your opening ceremony, and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my name's uh, Vincent Kavunga, and I serve as chair of the it Poly Africa Council. It is especially exciting to join you because uh, for us, as we say in uh, the AI and IoT challenge, Africa is connected, and Kenya this afternoon is connected. Uh, the Africa Council is proud to be as we see this as what is going to be one of the vehicles uh, for the transformational change that uh, we and our leaders have been talking about and discussing in many fora across the uh, continent. Uh, 
In Africa today, we find ourselves in a rather unique place. Uh, it is anticipated that by 2050, there are going to be 2.5 billion of us walking the earth. One in every five people in the world will be an African. And half of those people are actually going to be living in urban areas. Uh, our metro centers like Nairobi, Lagos, Cairo, and Johannesburg are anticipated to actually be bigger than New York and London. What does this mean? We are going to have an unprecedented demand for things like clean water, power and energy, telecommunications infrastructure, mobility, housing, irrigation, you name it, all kinds of engineering systems that are necessary for a modern society. So it is imperative therefore that Africa develops and maintains a strong engineering workforce of itself that will be for itself that will be able to meet those demands. And this is why IEEE has been working very hard to support the expansion of engineering capacity in Africa. Uh, we have a membership right across the continent in uh, 44 of the 54 countries and territories. And uh, through our Africa Council, we're able to bring all these members together uh, to collaborate on various initiatives and to engage with uh, our partners uh, in this work. And uh, these include uh, national engineering societies uh, like the Institution of Engineers of Kenya, uh, UNESCO, uh, the African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, uh, the Smart Africa Alliance, the World Bank, and others. Uh, we at IEEE are seeking to do three things. Increase access to technical information and engineering education strengthen the networks, the local networks that are actually going to get these things done and support the national governments and regulators so that they can actually develop the public policy that will enable uh, the enabling environment in which engineering can, can thrive. Uh, so far we have seen our work lead to things like a massive expansion in the access to IEEE Explore uh, today. Uh, 42 universities in Africa have now joined uh, and, and gotten access to the world's largest repository of technical literature on electrical engineering, computing, and other related disciplines. We have conducted virtual conferences and webinars, and uh, we have recently actually launched an exciting new project that is going to be providing uh, continuing education resources designed specifically for practicing engineers in Africa. And uh, this has actually uh, uh, been launched in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, uh, as the first country. Uh, uh, this was uh, one month ago. And we have additionally also established formal society agreements with national engineering associations uh, like the IEK, which I mentioned earlier, and are actively engaging in supporting the development of regional public policy. Uh, this includes the 4IR standardization strategy that we did with the Africa Regional uh, Standards Organization, ASO and the AI blueprint for Africa that we did with our friends at uh, the Smart Africa Alliance. Uh, we expect that these documents will be adopted by the heads of state later this year. We at IEEE are very excited as we are beginning to see all the parts coming together to make that digital transformation that we've been talking about start to happen. And empowering and supporting the young people to be at the forefront of the innovation-based economy that we're talking about is what the Africa AI and IoT challenge is about. I would like to send a special thank you to our uh, lead partners, uh, Dr. Mohamed Aboud and the team at uh, GIE, uh, the IEEE Technology and uh, Engineering Management Society, TEMS, our lead sponsor, Benia Capital and Wakandai Ventures, uh, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and the other local members of the local organizing committee, uh, our technical partners for this challenge, our community partners, and our IEEE Kenya section. And to all of you that have worked so hard to make this challenge a success. Uh, to all the competitors, I wish you all success in your endeavors and uh, thank you. Asante Nisana and back to you, Buana Mushiri.
Thank you very, very much, uh, Vincent. That was an uh, eye-opener of uh, the stuff that I, IEEE is doing across the continent, engaging the continent in terms of uh, uh, engineering and innovative you know, uh, engineering solutions, and just anticipating the huge burst in population uh, from the current 1.2 to about 2.4 and uh, 2.4 billion. And uh, just looking at solutions that will then uh, drive the future of this continent and um, and and, uh, and and deliver prosperity uh, into the continent. Thank you once again, Vincent, and all the best in all the endeavors that you're doing. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to welcome Mohammed Same uh, to give uh, uh, as a guest speaker, just to give his comments. Mohammed. Yeah. Good afternoon. Everyone. Good afternoon. Honored guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate the launch of IoT and AI Challenge in Kenya. Whenever we mention opportunities and potential, Kenya comes on top. So it's a pride to join the African organizations and companies concerned with youth development, especially in the field of IT and technology. The past few months have been very fruitful for Benia, inking several cooperation protocols with institutions both inside and outside of Egypt in order to establish and develop the ICT infrastructure of the countries in line with our vision of not only contributing to a technologically superior Egypt, but also a digitized Middle East and Africa region. Today, we are proud to be sponsoring Africa IoT and AI Challenge in Kenya, supporting the striving calibers in the ICT field and provide countries with qualified technical cadres who accelerate the digital transformation of the Arab world in Africa. Today, the world is going through a digital revolution, reflecting on the success and overall efficiency of the economy. No country seeking real sustainable development can hope to achieve its aim without a strong ICT sector in place to drive the necessary change. Africa has been always the land of opportunities full of resources and human capabilities power being the largest, youngest population. And there is growing consensus that Africa's youthfulness will continue to grow for the next 50 years while the other continents are aging. With initiatives and programs like IoT and AI Challenge, Africa will be shaping the future through innovation and technological advancements. Over the past years, Benia has been the strategic partner of the, of the government in deploying I, Egypt digital transformation. We have all resources, skills, and know-how to be the key enabler in digital transformation of the African nations. It's worth mentioning that Benya is about to launch its financial investment arm, Benya Venture, which plays a significant role in entrepreneurship across Egypt and the African region. The company will be investing in the high potential digital startups in Africa, supporting Benya's reach to the startups ecosystem where the Africa Challenge correspondingly will, will enable Benya to explore talents and scale existing potential startups in the digital arena. Benya will stay committed to enabling Africa digitally, and we are very proud of our African brothers and honored to play a part in their route to a complete digital utopia. We can't thank you enough today, our partners in Kenya for making this happen, and special thanks for IEEE, Mr. Aboud, Wakandai, as a co-founder of this great event. Thank you very much and hope we have a, a fruitful future together. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your um, comments and uh, your engagement. We hope that Benya can be able to expand into the, into the uh, country of Kenya and we can be able to continue to go together as we explore the potential that Africa holds uh, as a market. Uh, I would now like, okay, uh, thank you very much. I would now like to invite uh, Amir Karim uh, to just give his comments uh, as we proceed also with the uh, launch of this ceremony. Uh, Mr. Amir, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, you pronounced it right, yeah. <laughs> it's Amir Karim, yes, correct. So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon, Kenya. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be among uh, those uh, distinguished speakers today. I'm really delighted and super excited presented Wakandai as the organizing partner of the IT and AI Challenge event today. My name is Amr Karim. I'm the MD of Wakandai Venture, 
a technology savvy investment firm operating in the space of digital transformation with main focus on AI and IoT platform solutions and applications. Uh, a quick glimpse about what we are uh, doing at Wack and I. We are a group of experienced uh, entrepreneurs uh, processing a great passion about the technology and its impact on the way we live, work, and connect and interact. We strongly believe that our great continent, Africa, got the real talents and potential whom are eager and keen to capitalize on every single uh, technology opportunity for creating a better living for everyone. Um, as we all know, we live in a new uh, norm. We live in a new world where the pandemic uh, came with great lessons about the importance and the urge of the digital transformation. Uh, the strategic plans got accelerated and the need for automation, intelligent solutions, and customer e engagement expedited the global pace of innovation. Since the 1990 and the first generation of mobile networks, we were very lucky generation to see, live, and notice the evolution in ICT and how this evolution affected every aspect in our life. You remember, of course, going through the first generation, second and third and fourth generation. Now we are operating in the 5G and it's, it really changed the way we live. And we're now living everyone, every continent, every country, every person an equal chance to innovate, develop, and change the world technology innovation map. Back to Wakandai, we are committed to create a vision contributing to shaping our continent technology future. We are determined to bring the latest AI and IoT solutions and applications that will create an era of enlightenment and prosperity. Both the IoT and AI comes on top of the new the uh, digital transformation list for their very uh, uh, for their great importance and potential. In a nutshell, when we talk about the IT as a platform, the IT came to connect the devices on a platform to be remotely controlled and to collect the operational data coming out of those devices that would later help us to um, and help the, the decision makers to, to understand uh, how they operate and to understand the business better for better control and better decision making process. IT is everywhere from agriculture, from industrial, ICT, and even inside our homes. Smart homes, smart automation, they are all today operated through the IT. On top of the IT, uh, the AI came to process the collected data from the connected devices to make them capable to take the right decision at the right time. Some insights and facts about the IT, they are saying by 20, the reports is saying, of course, by 2025, we will have more than 42 billion connected devices and almost 70% of today's jobs in energy sector and 65% of today's job in consumer stables will be fully automated. The uh, uh, TIDA will, will, will uplift by 5%, reaching $33 billion uh, in, in energy and 29 billion in consumer stables. So the numbers are talking about the importance and the big potential. So in conclusion, Wakanda is established to drive the innovation and walk the talk. We are determined to contribute to the digital transformation of our continent, and we are here to support the ideas, innovators, and startups and talents to expedite their plans and turn the bold statements to tangible benefits. I wish the best of luck for everyone participating in this challenge. And let me just remind you, together we are united towards creating a better future for our continent, countries, people, and community. Thank you very much. Director, thank you for everyone. Thank you, Amir, and uh, thank you for uh, just reminding us uh, the potential and uh, how we can work together towards achieving that. Uh, uh, the, the numbers are amazing. Uh, 42, 42 billion connected devices is a, is a, is a, is a mind-boggling figure, but uh, really, that is where we're heading. So thank you very much, Amir, and uh, continue the great work you're doing at Wakandi. Wakandi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I uh, want to uh, uh, welcome Vincent, Vincent Egesa, uh, to give his comments as well, and uh, we can be able to proceed. Vincent? V Vincent, you're muted. Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Looking Thank great. You. Go ahead. Thank you for the invitation. Now, and, uh, I'm really happy to be here with everybody, and uh, this is really a great event to have. So I'm the chair of the Kenya section of Vitripoli, 
And uh, I think to begin with, I'll just uh, borrow from our tagline, which is uh, advancing technology for the benefit of humanity. And I think this event couldn't have come at a better time for us. Um, uh, in particular, because me and my XCOM are focusing on a couple of things that I think are in direct line with this. Uh, one of these is to help transition student members of IEEE in Kenya into professional work. Uh, second, of course, is to grow member benefits for our members in Kenya and to encourage them to participate in events and explore what is happening out there, uh, engage with other colleagues, engage with people of like minds, and encourage the innovative spirit uh, in the country. And in line with this, I'll just give you a brief of what our membership looks like in the country. Um, we've got professional student and student memberships from across uh, various uh, STEM and non-STEM disciplines. Um, of course, this includes the traditional engineering disciplines, information technology, and we also have seven student branches. A student branch is typically a mini IEEE section within a university. So we've got IEEE represented in seven universities across the country, and we are looking to getting more on board. Other than that, we also have spe special interest groups and uh, societies which represent or attend to the specific needs of different uh, member categories. These are not limited to, but include women in engineering, uh, photonics, computer society, communication society, circuits and systems, and uh, last but not least, uh, power engineering. We've also got a humanitarian arm, which is uh, known as SITE. And this is where we go out to society and put in initiatives and projects that help the society. We've been very active in putting in, for example, mini grids in various areas to allow various small communities get power and uh, energy for lighting and uh, you know, general electrification. Now, in, when I take all this into context, I think, uh, we are right on the right path in terms of this IoT challenge because it allows us to actually get our very, very talented youth to come out and actually put their knowledge and skills and interact with professionals in the industry to come up with the meaningful innovations. Um, we've been very fortunate and are very proud with, uh, for example, one of our student branches that came up with a ventilator to help ease the COVID uh, situation. And in fact, this particular device is currently undergoing tests and hopefully we'll have it commercialized one of these days. And I'm particularly proud that the most of the members of that team are members of the student branch in IEEE. So I think we are ready and geared up to provide the relevant audience to help participate in this event across the various student branches. And we do not, uh, discriminate. We also work with non-members so that they may benefit from technology and also so that they can join IEEE and benefit from the vast, vast pool of knowledge, uh, literature, uh, resources, and uh, you know, amazing people that are ready to work with us. Of course, I can't leave without mentioning that you know, as IEEE, we are very active in coming up with standards. I'm sure you're aware of various IEEE standards that are run across the world and in various innovations. And so I think putting all this together, I'm really happy and thankful to all the partners, uh, organizers of this event, technical partners, and everybody who has just contributed to really make this happen. And I'm really looking forward to making sure we get some vibrant participation and see some really good innovations coming out of this initiative. Thank you, everybody, and uh, looking forward to good engagements going forward. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you for the um, um, introduction of the IWE uh, Kenya. And uh, we really want to congratulate you for the work that you're doing, particularly with the junior uh, levels of IWE at uh, IEEE at the universities. I don't know if it is, a, uh, I've just noticed that uh, we have uh, two Vincents at the top echelons of, uh, of leadership at uh, IEEE uh, at, the, at the Africa level, as well as Kenya. Is it a requirement for you to be Vincent, to be? 
Um, I think maybe great minds think alike. So <laughs> we happen to congregate in the right, uh, you know, meet melting pot. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I, I, I'm aware that we have the uh, your vice, uh, who's part of your your excom. Um, and maybe we can just, uh, in, in the interest of ensuring that uh, ladies also speak, you had men all uh, speaking all through. Maybe we can just have just as uh, uh, your your vice say a hello. I know she's part of the the team that is here. Yes, Esther, please a word from you. Uh, she may be in the participants list. I'm not sure if she'll be ah. able to say a word. Okay, that is okay. I guess then um, we'll give Esther another chance at a, at a later st a stage. But uh, it's I, I'm glad that we do have uh, uh, ladies. We might be accused uh, of just having men within the engineering fraternity. Uh, so I'm glad that there are ladies and uh, ladies who are very uh, engaged and uh, producing highly effective uh, solutions to the engineering problems that exist in the country and the continent level. So thank you. And you, you need to give us a secret of becoming a, a Vincent as well. <laughs> okay, um, now I'd like to um, I welcome Latif. Latif uh, uh, operates within um, Gearbox and they'll tell us what they're doing at, uh, at Gearbox. Uh, Latif, please, Karibu. Thank you very much for the opportunity and it's a pleasure um, and really an honor um, to be invited to this um, uh, auspicious occasion. Um, and this to me is validation of the exciting things that are happening on the continent right now. Uh, my background is actually mechanical engineering, but a lot of that time was spent in electronics manufacturing. And when I moved back to Kenya, I didn't expect that I'd be doing electronics manufacturing on the continent. And the fact that we are doing that currently, again, just validates what is happening now. And it tells me what um, the potential of what is coming down into the future. So if you'll allow me, uh, Director Mishri, I'd just like to present something real quick and um, share what um, I think is, is, is happening um, on the continent. Um, so if I can just share my screen. Uh, okay, well, it looks like my, uh, I'm not, I don't have advice to share the screen, but I will just, uh, I'll just talk through it. So, Gearbox um, is actually uh, morphed into three organizations. Uh, Gearbox in its inception was a, a designed to be an incubator for hardware startups. And the main role there is to help a startup or anybody who has an idea um, to create a product that will solve something in society to go very quickly from an idea to a market, uh, a product into the market. So how do you reduce the product development time. So Gearbox has been doing that since 2014. In the last two years, um, Gearbox has actually um, put in place the first world-class electronics manufacturing facility in the region, right? So what does this mean for anybody who's on this call, anybody who's looking to design a product? What this means for, for you is that you can go very quickly from designing your solution, prototyping that solution, creating a pilot, manufacturing that product directly in Kenya. And what this means for you and your customers is that you can shorten the feedback loop to go from prototype, understand how the, the, the market is going to take your product, take that data back into your product, iterate it, and go very quickly from an MVP or minimum viable product to something that is adding value um, across the continent. So, um, what this really means for us is instead of having to design a product and then go to China to make your prototype and then ship that prototype back to Nairobi, put it out to the market, realize that you have a problem and then start that cycle over and over again, is that you can do that right here in the backyard. Um, so we're really looking forward to interacting with all the participants um, in this challenge. And again, um, it really is a validation of where we are. And I'll, I have a really interesting stat for you. Over the last five years, there has been a tripling with startups involved in developing hardware solutions just in Kenya, okay? So what does this mean? It means that people are understanding that they can create value, they can create a living in solving these solutions or creating a, a solution to the challenges that we face every day. And in fact, um, engineer- Latif, yes. Latif, sorry, just to, to interrupt you, you do have rights to share your screen. 
Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Let me try that again. Let's try that. Sorry to interrupt your train of thought. No, no, not a problem. Not a problem at all. Um, so I can see screen. All right. So I will. Can you see that? Please let me know. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So as I mentioned, Gearbox is really a three organizations in one. Um, Gearbox, the original uh, organization started as a hardware incubator. And over the last two years, we've created two other organizations to really help um, build things that matters or create inclusive manufacturing opportunities for Kenya. Machine Africa is an organization that really focuses on the mechanical side of creating products, while Gearbox Europlacer, um, which is what I run, focuses on the electronics manufacturing side. So how are we going to do this? And, and our vision here is really, we want to stimulate the creation and manufacturing of African designed intelligent solutions that solve the problems that we face every day. And the challenge that we're in today speaks to that, right? And how do we want to do that? The first thing is we need to collaborate and this occasion speaks to that, right? We, uh, the more we collaborate, the more we can surface local problems. And then from there, we can innovate um, to create solutions that solve those problems. And then most importantly is propagate and scale those solutions across the region. If we solve a problem in Kenya, we're halfway to solving that problem in Cameroon, in uh, Mozambique and what have you. Right? If we're just looking at electronics manufacturing, right? what are we, how, what does this look like in Africa? South Africa and North Africa have developed um, capabilities and the rest of Africa that is really a, a black box, right? So this tells us the opportunity of um, what we can do if we develop this capability. An interesting thing here to note is that manufacturing right now is going through a very interesting age because of the fourth industrial revolution. And that age is called reshoring of manufacturing. That means manufacturing that used to be offshored into maybe China or countries with lower labor is actually moving back to the Western countries. So what this really means for us here in Africa is that we were locked out in the age of offshoring. We were locked out in the age of nearshoring. And if we don't do something now, we will be locked out again in the age of reshoring. So we have a time bound opportunity um, to change that. And this again, this, this, organ this meeting speaks to that change that is happening, right? Kenya, interestingly, is also a leader um, by happenstance in the region. And this is by a multitude of factors, meaning we're very entrepreneurial. We have uh, a big investment right now in, in the rapid expansion of IoT networks. We have a large youth pool population that's uh, educated in, in, in electrical engineering as um, the two Vincents um, uh, elaborated on. And then most importantly too, mobile payments are ingrained in our economy. And this reduces that barrier for uh, IoT enabled service deployment, right? This really quickly just tells us what is happening in the IoT space in Kenya. Um, the four main areas where we're seeing a lot of development is in healthcare, of course, driven by COVID. Pay as you go is the fastest growing segment for IoT, and this accounts for 65% of all IoT products being designed. Agriculture is a space with a lot of innovation um, and a lot of opportunity. We cannot feed ourselves in Kenya, we have to import food. So anybody who creates a solution that adds value there um, can really um, do a lot for the economy. A lot of innovation is being done in, in the utility space. And then what we see coming um, is electric mobility, last mile logistics, and then industrial applications. So there's a wide range of IoT solutions that can be developed um, in our region. Okay? What are the advantages of having local manufacturing? Um, it means that you don't have to hold large capital if you're a startup. You can get your products in just in time. You have access to world-class manufacturing uh, processes. And um, you actually get to recoup VAT um, if you produce your products locally. Right? So what we are, we are going to do is provide the entire value chain of electronic services, be it design, be it manufacturing, be it testing. And this is all available to startups and um, uh, entrepreneurs here locally in Nairobi, right? Again, providing world-class manufacturing services. So if you look at our operating uh, our manufacturing services and compare it to 
China or Eastern Europe, there is no difference there because we're following the international standards. Um, this is really important, again, for what we're talking about today. Um, how do we develop um, solutions? We really have to go through a very a quite um, defined process for developing products, you know, from your proof of concept to your alpha prototype to your beta prototype into mass manufacturing. And we can help with that as well, right? Um, we've helped a lot of our uh, startups create value adding uh, solutions. Um, a key one here is this Vendi kit um, product, which is a sanitary towel ATM machine that is getting deployed across the country, which makes it very easy um, for um, uh, ladies to get um, sanitary towels in a, in, in a in, in, in a great way. Okay. This is our line that is, is now in Nairobi and it is running and we are ready to help add value to the local market. And of course we can do uh, prototyping as well. So right from creating a, uh, a PCB, placing components on that PCB, we have that capability to do that. So we're really looking forward to helping all the participants of this uh, organization to be able to scale up as quickly as some of the startups that you see in front of you. So that way you can go from just an idea to actually adding value, helping your family, helping your community, helping your country. We look forward to this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you Lati for the uh, excellent presentation and uh, the engagement in just showing uh, the young people and the young participants areas of, uh, uh, of uh, collaboration uh, and, and how they can be able to work with you as they develop their innovations and how you can be able to hold their hand to the next level. We're glad to see some of the, the, the innovations that you've taken to market and uh, assisted young people to actually uh, create uh, opportunities for themselves, right from scratch, from ideation, all the way to market. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, now I'd like us to go to the next uh, segment and uh, I would like to invite one of our young innovators who is actually a member of the chamber uh, uh, and uh, they are, I, uh, from, from the uh, uh, presentation that Vincent made, uh, I believe they are also part of the younger IEEE uh, membership. I would like to invite Cynthia, Cynthia Ruguru to just give a presentation. Cynthia, over to you. Okay, looks like uh, Cynthia hasn't connected. Cynthia, are you here with us? All right, I, I guess then we can move on to the next segment. Um, and I must uh, congratulate uh, IEEE Kenya for engaging the younger, um, younger engineers, uh, even as they um, uh, look for solutions for some of the most complex uh, problems that uh, are affecting our community here in Kenya. I uh, must give it to you, uh, Vincent and your team uh, for such a great engagement. And uh, we look forward to working with them as a chamber and uh, growing some of the solutions to then engage within the market. Um, now, I guess um, I would like to just encourage our participants for any uh, questions that you would like to have, please engage the uh, Q&A uh, button. Uh, please post your questions there and we'll be, we'll be able to answer them as we go along. Um, now I'd like us to, as we progress, we've uh, really uh, done well on time. I want to just engage um, uh, towards the end of our, our presentation, the, um, uh, some just a bit of uh, entertainment and then we can go uh, uh, to, the, to the next part. But before that, I can see uh, Esther is now part of our panelists. Esther, welcome. Please say a word. Thank you very much, Moshiri and the team for the welcome. Uh, I'm glad that I am here to neutralize the team and show that indeed women are represented in the matters engineering and ICT. I am excited to be the vice chair of IEEE and to be uh, blessed to have worked with the two great Vincents. Uh, when I joined IEEE, my first uh, real engagement was with Vincent Kabuga, 
where we set up the Center of Excellence, which is based currently at uh, Kenyatta University. And out of which I must say I'm very proud because Cynthia Roboro, who was going to be speaking, is a beneficiary and a user of that space where they developed the ventilator that won a presidential award in Kenya. And so being part of this uh, challenge, IoT and AI for me is very exciting. And I look forward to having many young people engage in this competition. Uh, in my career as an ICT specialist, I have participated in putting together hackathons that have brought out such beautiful ICT innovations. And I'm looking forward to inviting so many of those that have innovations to come on board and participate, but more importantly, have women who have those innovations come and be part of this competition because ideas cut across the board. And my biggest ask at this uh, challenge is that we have as many people sign up as mentors. I run an organization, eMentoring Africa, where we champion mentorship for the youth. And so one of the ads that we shall be bringing on as IEEE Kenya section is a call out to global mentors to hold the hands of these young innovators so that they do not just innovate alone, but they will have industry leaders working with them as they compete to push these innovations globally. So thank you very much for the opportunity to say a word and I look forward to working together with the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry and all the other partners on this uh, exciting challenge. Thank you and back to you, Bwana Mushiri. Thank you very much, Esther. Thank you for the great job that you're doing at uh, E-Mentoring Africa. And um, I have worked with you for many years and seen you hold the hands of young, um, young upcoming entrepreneurs, young people who are looking for direction and, and mentorship. I have seen you in Korogosho going to uh, the depths of the country, just uh, bringing out the talent and the and the raw the raw skill and um, um, uh, opportunities for younger people. So thank you very much, and uh, all the best as you, you engage with IWE uh, -E to just engage uh, innovation and technology for the betterment of Africa's uh, population. Uh, we do have a representative from uh, TVET, uh, the, the TVET uh, Authority. Uh, the TVET Authority is responsible for putting together um, the value chain around TVET, which is a technical and vocational education, uh, which then impacts skills into the younger people. And uh, some of these skills include IoT, of course, and AI, as well as other skills that are going to see the young people uh, see the embodiment uh, of, of their collective vision of 2030 of uh, raising the profile and um, livelihood of uh, the Kenyans in, the, in this country to middle level. Um, uh, we have somebody from um, Tibet Authority. I can see we have uh, Jafet. Oh, Jafet, uh, as we proceed, you, you, you'll get some uh, rights to be able to speak. But for now, maybe we can just have an entertainment session. Lela. Okay, so as we proceed, we've done very well on time. We want to keep our meeting very predictable. And so as we proceed, uh, I'll invite my colleague uh, in the chamber. Uh, we do have uh, uh, sectors and uh, sector boards that uh, directs the activities within the sector. And for uh, the, the ICT area, we do have a, a young director, who uh, a young chair of the ICT uh, subsector. And uh, I will be handing over to him to carry on the next part of this uh, meeting. But before that, I can see uh, Mulela is back online. Maybe you can give us, uh, uh, let's uh, see some of your skill and uh, enjoy some of uh, what you've been working on over, over the years. Mulela. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, for this next song, um, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that amazing, amazing uh, talent. Uh, just watch our checky. At our kijaribu kukuweka lo 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 lo. We encourage you to continue growing your skill and go to the greater heights that uh, are available for you. I'm just reminded uh, of a uh, of a young guy who um, uh, you know just sang with such passion and such a, a conviction like you. And today he's one of the amazing leading stars in the Hollywood industry. That was Tyrese. Uh, so we encourage you to sing on um, uh, all these uh, platforms that we have. Uh, but I don't think in Kenya you'll be able to sing in a bus like he did. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, uh, explore your talents, uh, Mulela, and we wish you all the best as you proceed with, uh, with your talent. Um, uh, I, I now would like to hand over to our young uh, uh, chair of the ICT committee to handle the next part of the, our meeting. I do want to recognize that we have Director Pravin, who is a director of uh, TVET within uh, the, the midst, and um, I'll give a chance to, to Rama to then um, uh, introduce him. So Rama Madiba, welcome very uh, Karibu Sana, uh, the young and innovative chair of the ICT committee. Karibu Sana, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director Mushiri. Thank, thank you very much, uh, the other members of the, uh, the panelists and the people who have been able to attend uh, this, uh, uh, this session. It's just for the beginning. Great stuff that we have, uh, that, has, that have been spoken here. Uh, looking really forward to an, an engaging two months as we, uh, as we ramp up towards the, uh, the final challenge sometime in, uh, in September. Uh, of this year. And um, uh, just to check um, uh, and to invite uh, Director Praveen to make, um, make his remarks on behalf of uh, uh, the committee and on behalf of the chamber, uh, then we can, uh, then we can uh, move towards winding up uh, this, this particular session. Uh, Director Praveen. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Um, I guess I was not ready for this, but uh, anyway, all the distinguished uh, guests, Director Mushiri, Director Rama, uh, all protocols observed. I'm very excited on behalf of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry 
uh, to be part of this session. Uh, very interesting. I'm also very passionate about artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, um, something <clears throat> uh, which we all look forward uh, as Kenya uh, to be progressing. It's a new age, new technology, very important. Um, and again, it's a game changer because everything that goes the A uh, uh, the AI way is uh, more reliable. It's also more uh, interesting, easier, uh, lesser strain, and the uh, precision with which responses comes from AI is the key important factor as compared to the manual proceeding. So it is a very important uh, attribute to mankind. That's one. Uh, Internet of Things, again, the next big things in the next 20 years. So it's a great thing. And uh, uh, you guys have been doing a, a wonderful job. All the participants, congratulations. You're at the right place. It's the right career. All those who are part of this um, uh, program, uh, congratulations. This is something um, you're doing a, a wonderful job. Also, uh, connecting Africa is a huge thing. We have been talking about a population of around 2 billion by 2030, thereabout. So this is a great frontier, a great initiator. And again, if China, if India, America, Europe can do it, why not Africa? So thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited and I'm listening to all the speakers. You've done a wonderful job and I'm glued to see more about it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director Praveen, uh, for those uh, uh, remarks. Uh, and, and, and we are really uh, happy to, um, uh, to have learned from, 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 from your experience and we, within that sector. And we're looking forward to, to, to working together to make this particular challenge a success. Uh, uh, we, are, we are also uh, privileged that uh, we, uh, we have uh, Jafet Ngeno, who has uh, who has joined us, and it's my it's it's my pleasure to invite uh, to to invite uh, Zafet Ngel from uh, from TVET, the TVET director, to to make uh, his uh, remarks. Thank you, Director Mustafa, for the invitation. I hope you can hear me. We can hear you very well, uh, uh, Zafet. Okay, okay. Uh, we do appreciate the uh, the collaboration we have. We are having with the uh, National Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry in Tibet. We are doing also well. We are uh, we are already registered as a World Skills International member, so we expect to ex uh, or to exhibit uh, best skills at world stage. So bringing in IoT, we shall have interest as Stevet, and we I hope to journey together with uh, this uh, this plan you have undertaken now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Director Angeno, uh, for those uh, for those remarks. And indeed, we are looking forward to uh, we are looking forward to um, uh, to working together to make this particular. Uh, challenges uh, a success and even go beyond the challenge. And just to remind all of us that this is going to be an annual event. So as soon as we are done with this challenge, we will then uh, start planning for next year. Uh, so uh, I would just want to, to thank all of us who've been here and, and then invite um, uh, Feva to make uh, the, the closing remarks. He's and, uh, and taking questions, some Q&A. He is the brains and the hard work behind this. So uh, um, most welcome, uh, Favor. Favor. Uh, hello, how are you? <laughs> Sorry, juggling a bunch of things at the same time. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you very well. Great, great. Um, so yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rama, Dr. Mashiri, and to all our, our guests and panelists and um, all of you for attending today's session. So um, this is the, the opening ceremony for the um, Africa IoT and AI Challenge in Kenya. 
And uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be having some sessions on the info session so that you can learn um, about the different stages about the event that you may have questions on, or in case you have any, key, any challenges, you can mention them. And um, the rest of the organizing committee can see how best to help and address them at that time as well. Uh, we'll also be having the, the final ceremony um, towards the end of August or early September where the top 10 teams will be um, pitching um, physically and uh, we'll be selecting the top three to go for the regionals um, at, the, at the end of the year, which will be in December. Um, additionally, what will also be happening is uh, there'll be a final uh, pitching session, which will be virtual before the physical ceremony where um, the top teams will be selected to compete and they'll be chosen uh, for the final ceremony. So uh, between this time, we'll also be having mentorship as, uh, um, as Esther mentioned, whereby we'll, be, we'll, we'll, be, we'll use the database of our, the contacts of the team that have applied um, so that they're able to join the WhatsApp group and be able to have um, virtual mentorship sessions with the different um, mentors on the program. So that whether you are in Kisumu, uh, whether you're in Mombasa, whether you're in Moyale, you can still keep in touch with the mentors during this stage. And then you'll be able to now um, be best prepared for the final pitching session before the, the closing ceremony. So um, that's just a, a nutshell about it. Uh, so we'll be sharing that by email to, to all the applicants so that um, as you journey on, you're able to continuously um, have the feedback and information you need. Um, and then what will happen is for the top three teams, you'll, you'll be able through the partnership with Gearbox, um, as you saw Director Latif um, from Gearbox mentioned about the different equipment and programs they have, um, you'll be able to work with them to develop your prototype so that you're able to compete at the regionals in Dubai in, in December. So all the teams that will be submitting virtually will be presenting um, <clears throat> virtual, um, not, not virtual, like um, documented um, I, um, innovations where it, it's, a, it's, a, it's not yet at the prototype stage maybe, and maybe you don't have the hardware or equipment or you don't have the facilities to develop that's still okay because we're trying to standardize it so that the access is, is, is possible for all innovators that um, are able to work on the ideas. Then now the top three teams will be able to now work on actually prototyping and developing an MVP that is market ready with Gearbox so that when they go for the, the global regionals, they actually have a product that can compete at a regional level and that's ready for implementation because at the global regionals, not only do the top three teams stand a chance to win, they also stand a chance to receive investment from the, the venture capitalists that are and, and, and investors and donors that are part of the Africa IoT and AI challenge. So that now they're able to scale, scale their ideas and, and um, implement their innovations at, at a larger level and um, go to market. So um, that's, that's uh, it from my intro, um, we could take on some questions as well. Is, is that all right, uh, Director Mushiri and Director Ramos? That's, that, that's 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 okay. Uh, you can you can you can take a few questions and then close this session for us. All right, thank you. Um, so for the attendees, uh, uh, please feel free to um, type in any questions that you may have. Uh, Let's try and see if we could uh, enable you to talk. So you could just raise your hand uh, and we'll be able to, or raise your, mention your question and then we'll be able to get to you. So for the attendees, maybe you could try uh, typing in the chat or raising your hand and then we can, uh, we can be able to address your questions. Great, um, Michael Lambuli, uh, go ahead. I think you're on mute. Oh, you could unmute and uh, share your question. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Um, there's a question that's been raised by, uh, let's see. Yes, but we'll start with Felicity's question. Uh, or Michael, are you ready to ask your question? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, my question is about just a clarification on the eligibility to participate in the challenge. Uh, from the earlier presentation, I noted that uh, there was something to do with like uh, the senior university uh, students. Uh, maybe I need you to make a clarification on that. Thank you. So on senior university, maybe if you could clarify, do you mean like a graduate program, um, undergraduate program? Uh, would you mind clarifying? Uh, Michael, are you there? Sorry, I didn't get you. Uh, you mentioned the senior, senior university uh, students. So I was wondering um, by what stage you're referring to specifically? Uh, I think it's in one of the presentations that, that I picked that uh, aspect of uh, senior university uh, mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a clarification on who exactly can actually participate in the challenge. All right, great. Um, I'll start to answer your question in case I, uh, Mr. Mohamed Aboud, you could clarify as well. Um, so it's open to undergraduate students um, pursuing a bachelor diploma certificate program um, or a technical course, a short course. Um, there's, the program is also accessible to students doing graduate degrees, um, and that's a master's level or a professional course. Um, or post uh, 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 an advanced diploma or higher diploma. Um, for anything higher and age specifics, uh, you, could, you could join in on the info session, but so far, as long as you're pursuing um, your studies at a university, the challenge has been open, but we'll confirm in case there might be any specific age restrictions. Um, and then we'll be able to let you know. Uh, then in case maybe say there are younger members on your team, you're able, you could maybe, if say there's an age restriction on say one of the members, that member could step aside and mentor the rest of the team. And then the team could still be able to um, um, journey on with their innovation. Um, I hope that, does that answer your question? Yes, it answers, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Um, so for Peter Munyu, um, there's a question that was answered by Director Mushiri. Uh, so he'll be contacting you on your request. Of, um, then there's a question by Felicity Mecha. Uh, if you're in the IoT space and we're not represented here, how do we plug in? So if you're in the IoT space um, and you want to contribute in any way, there's a men mentorship session that'll be opened up. So where we'll, we'll be sending out emails with a Google form so that if you're interested in, in, in mentoring, you'll be able to uh, join and mentor the teams. Um, then we'll be able to quickly assign you to different groups uh, so that we can because as you know, WhatsApp caps group sizes so that we can assign you to different groups and you can have mentorship sessions in, in, at best in your convenience um, in the evenings or in the early mornings because some of the students are still in school, others are also working maybe side jobs or building their startups. Um, so uh, additionally, um, there's a, so yeah, so that's how in case maybe you have a startup and you'd like to mentor the teams, that's how you can plug in. Or if you'd want to participate and um, say the founding members of your startup are still pretty young or they're in university, you can still be able to plug in and, and apply for the program. Um, and uh, Caleb Ochiang mentioned, uh, so he says, my name is Caleb Oguma and my question is that what can it take for us to be contributors, not just consumers of this kind of technology? whereby we easily get platforms or opportunity to test our ideas or products. So, all right, so this is this is a great question and I think it ties well into what both the Vincents and Esther and, and Director Latif mentioned that this is that pivotal stage where, you know, Africa and Kenya has a chance to, to take a step up on that stage to be contributors and actually develop in innovations that are not only solving problems, but actually can scale. Um, and th these are some of the opportunities that are available and that one can explore to be able to leverage on, on, on their ideas, their innovation, their potential. So it's it, we're consumers um, being net importers as many African countries, but 
um, it's through that additional value creation, that developing of an innovation, that not just taking it at an idea stage, but prototyping it, getting it ready for market, doing whatever is necessary to be able to take it to market. Um, and and that's, that's, that's the best thing that, you know, one can do for their country, especially at this stage. Um, so this is one of the platforms. Um, uh, and as you've seen, many of the partner organizations have, have existing initiatives in this, in this front. So um, you could participate in the competition, be able to leverage on, on the contributions from the different partners. You could also engage the different partners as well um, for further support or any further clarity. Um, so now, for instance, if you're able to develop, this is to Caleb, if you're able to, and, and, and any of the teams here, so if you're able to develop your innovation and um, you're able to compete uh, at, the, at the final virtual competition and then compete at the top 10 and you emerge top three, um, not only do you get to fully implement your innovation up to MVP stage, you get to compete at a global, at a regional and global level. Because in Dubai, you'll be competing with other African countries, you'll be competing with other country, countries in the Middle East as, um, that are part of the United Arab Emirates. So this is a chance for you to accelerate that, that journey, you know, whereby you get to reach a larger set of, of um, potential partners, um, you get to compete at a, at a larger scale. Um, so I think this would be a great opportunity for cable for you, Caleb, and your team, and, and and anyone in your network. So, yeah, please please do go for it. Um, so, not sure, might there be any other question? Um, there's a question from Philemon Rutich. Uh, go ahead. Uh Thank you very much, Fefa. Uh, thank you for organizers. My name is Philemon. I'm doing my master's uh, in embedded mobile systems. But unfortunately, I'm doing it from Arusha, Tanzania. I don't know if I will be eligible. And uh, yeah. currently, I've developed uh, an ind indoor environment monitoring system that monitors the plant. And uh, I do have the prototype already. And uh, I look forward for the mentorship coaching and also I have keen interest in healthcare. Uh, my question was, uh, is it studying in Kenya or South side of the country can participate? Thank you. Currently, I'm in Kenya. Thank you. Great. So you mentioned you're in Kenya, but you're studying in Tanzania. Or are you in Tanzania, but you're Kenyan? Would you mind clarifying? I'm in Kenya, Sorry, but I did my coursework uh -huh. in uh, in related. Sorry. So I say that again. I already completed. I already completed my coursework, and uh, I'm waiting graduation. So I'm in Kenya, and uh, my my thesis or my research uh, project was concerning uh, IoT uh, project, and I couldn't Great. really see if, if I could implement that. To, no, no, no. To, to the innovation, make it Sorry, it, it cut off, but uh, I, I think I got the general aspect of your question. Um, I think so far, we I don't think there's a challenge in Tanzania, and the fact that you're also in Kenya and being a Kenyan as well. Uh, you, I think it would be perfect for you to apply and, and participate in the competition. And like you said, uh, seeing the fact that your idea is at the MVP stage, you might have iterations and adjustments that you might want to make between now and the competition. So please feel free and please uh, don't hesitate to um, make any adjustments. And once you apply, you'll be able to engage with uh, the different partners um and gain get, get support and you know we wish you all the best as well um even as you you know focused on it for your final project for your dissertation um so i think uh let's see if there's uh any other question okay um there's some questions in the chat. Gregory mentioned, can graduates who are not students participate? Uh, so far, yes, we will gain clarity in case they might have an age restriction. Um, so you, I, I think you should feel free to apply 
And in case there might be an age restriction, but you have younger members of the team, you could remain as a mentor to the rest of the team, but the team can um, proceed and you can continue to support and work with them moving forward. Um, so yes, yes, so thank you very much, Rose, uh, uh, for that as well. So we'll be sharing out an email where you'll be able to fill in a form uh, if you'd like to mentor the teams as well, um, so that now from there you'll be able to um, best engage moving forward. Uh, so I think with that, we, we should be good to go. I think we could um, close the session there. Um, Director Rama, might you have anything else to add or Director Mashiri? Uh, on behalf of Director Mashiri, um, just, just want to say thank you. Uh, and, and nothing much from this uh, from this end. All right, all right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So thank you very much to the panelists, uh, to the partners um, uh, for all your support, uh, your contribution, uh, and also just uh, your interest. I mean, this this takes great uh, uh, commitment to be part of an initiative like this, um, considering this is a great sacrifice as well. So. To IEEE, thank you very much. Um, to um, Africa IoT and AI Challenge, we thank you as well. Um, to um, uh, our partners at different TVETs, we thank you as well. Director Pravin, thank you very much. Um, and also want to thank you Latif uh, from Gearbox. Um, we look forward to working with Gearbox as well um, and uh, your experience and expertise as well. So thank you all very much. and. Uh, like to wish you a lovely evening and a great week ahead and uh, look forward to engaging. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Have a good day. Thank you.